All right, I found some semantics as to why the end of video one was slightly misleading. Not necessarily m misleading in the concept, but more just, um, there's just a small difference logically and I wanted to cover it. Um, the first video I only talked about the electric force and I hadn't started talking about the electric field yet. And um, so that, that I covered in the second video. So now I wanna go back to this, to this idea, right? Where you have in a three dimensional universe, you have this electric field going out, you know, uh, spherically. And so you have, because positive charges are sources, and negative charges are sinks, this is my positive charge. And so the field lines point away. And not only do they point out the edges here, they're pointing towards us as well, you know, coming out here and here and here and there, and even straight towards us, right? So there's one that's coming out of the board as well. So you're just imagining this sphere with all these electric field lines uh, penetrating the surface. And so the amount of field lines, like I said last time, so let's look at the uh, equation for the electric field caused by this charge one. If you'll remember, it's equal to the charge one divided by four pi r squared epsilon sub naught. And so if you'll recall the surface area of a sphere, so the area here is one over four pi r squared. And so that leaves us for, for the fixed number of lines, right? Lines don't reappear in space. You know, they don't just show up. Lines can only point out of or into a charge. And so the a quantity of lines that we have due to this charged particle is going to equal, so let's write it as uh, field lines. This isn't actually a real, this isn't a real quantity as far as I know, it's, it's more of an example. So the amount of field lines is going to be proportional to Q1 over epsilon sub naught. So for example, a charge that's larger is going to, and because this is constant in, in free space in a vacuum. So if we increase the charge, we're gonna increase the number of field lines, right? So if we're interested in the density of field lines at some given point on the surface, you know, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the field lines divided by the area. So this is the field line area density. So just like with mass density, we're gonna take the quantity that we're interested in finding the density of and divide it by the region of which we are spreading that out on. And so that's gonna equal, of course, the E field caused by this charge. So before, I, when I talked about the amount of field lines and talked about the force, I had a Q2 up here as well. But this is in fact, um, this is uh, regardless of whether there's a second charge or not. Um, this applies to a singular charge uh, or a multitude of charges, but I just thought it was, it was a little bit misleading. Hopefully it made sense. Um, so anyways, this is just a slight correction. Um, let me think, there might've been one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Oh, that's right. So I think I already said this, but the electric field is always radial. And so you'll notice that these lines are always pointing in the direction of an increasing radius. That's because it's a positive charge. So in other words, a field line that pierces this sphere is going to be normal to the sphere at all points. And of course, if I make this a negative charge, all the field lines are pointing in. And so that would mean that, I'm, that I have the same strength that the charge is the same, but in a negative radial direction. So that would be pointing inwards. All right, I hope that clears things up, um, and I'll go ahead and see you next video.